Welcome to the installation ceremony of Corey L. Duckworth as the eighth president of Jamestown Community College. My name is Jeannie Johnston, and I am a JCC faculty member in the Social Sciences and Business Division. It is my honor to preside over today's ceremony. In keeping with the dignity of this ceremony, we ask you to please turn off your cell phones and that you refrain from texting during the program. I would also like to point out the fire exits at the front and rear of the theater. At the conclusion of the ceremony, we ask that you remain at your seats until all of the members of the platform party, administration, and faculty have had an opportunity to recess. We also hope at the conclusion of the installation ceremony that each of you will join us for a reception at the Student Union. Student volunteers will be available to help direct those of you who are unfamiliar with JCC. Finally, when the JCC Ensemble, under the direction of Ralph Rasmussen, performs the processional within the next few minutes, we ask that you please remain seated so all may have a good view of those processing. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise for the playing of the national anthem.
Thank you. Please be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce the guest speakers of this afternoon's platform party. I ask them to please stand and remain standing to be recognized. Please hold your applause until the entire group is introduced. The first member, Daryl Bray, president of the Cattaraugus Campus Student Senate, is unable to be here today due to illness. I will be uh, producing or, or giving Daryl's remarks on his behalf in his absence. Rinaldo Munez, president of the Jamestown Campus Student Senate. Johanna Duncan Poitier, senior vice chancellor for community colleges and the education pipeline and representing SUNY Chancellor Nancy Zimfer. Dr. William Setterberg, retired, Utah Commissioner for Higher Education and our keynote speaker today. Dr. Corey Duckworth, President, Jamestown Community College. Wally Hucknow, Chairperson of the JCC Board of Trustees. Dr. Gerald Crinan, Professor of English, JCC North County Center and Chair of the Faculty. And Paula Snyder, Director, College Health Services. Thank you. The platform party may now be seated. Members of the JCC Board of Trustees have joined us today and are listed in the program. Will the trustees please stand and be recognized? Representatives of other colleges and universities are also with us today. I will ask that these guests, those who have processed and are on the stage, as well as those in the audience, please stand and be recognized. Jamestown Community College has long enjoyed the support and friendship of elected officials at the local, state, and federal levels. We have several elected officials with us today, and we thank them very much for being here. I ask that they stand and be recognized, and once again, please hold your applause until they have all been introduced. New York State Assemblyman Andrew Goodell. Chautauqua County Executive Gregory Edwards. Chair of the Cattaraugus County Legislature, Norm Marsh. President of the City of Jamestown City Council, Greg Rapp. <laughs> there are two other guests that we would like to acknowledge at this time. Former JCC President, Dr. Gregory T. DeSincu, who served JCC with distinction from 1994 until August of this year. Dr. DeSincu, will you please stand and be recognized? In addition, we are pleased to recognize Mr. Paul Binky, President Emeritus of JCC, who served as the fifth president of the college from 1981 to 1991. Mr. Binky, will you please stand and be recognized?
Jamestown Community College has a diverse student body of more than 3,600 students from 40 New York counties, 12 states, and 12 foreign countries. Representing the Jamestown campus, North County, and Warren Center sites, I invite Rinaldo Munez, president of the Jamestown Campus Student Senate, to the podium to offer greetings on behalf of the students. Thank you, Ms. Johnston. The good news is, if you guys make it through the next two or three minutes, you will have passed the low point of the evening. <laughs> but uh, on a serious note, uh, let me say, let me offer a very warm welcome to the faculty, staff, students, and distinguished guests that are here with us this afternoon. We've come together today to recognize and honor a man who in just a very short time has become an integral part of our community. Please join me in officially welcoming Dr. Corey Duckworth. A little bit about me. My educational background is unorthodox, to say the least. For the better portion of my life, I was homeschooled with my five siblings in my home state of Connecticut. Needless to say, this experience was unique. I was introduced to fractions while baking cookies, geometry while woodworking, and vocabulary by reading the dictionary with my siblings on long car rides. And so when it came time to choose a college, I had two very important criteria that needed to be fulfilled. First, that it was close to home so that I could spend just a little bit more time with my siblings as if I didn't spend enough time with my siblings. And second, I needed a place that would allow me to continue my experiential learning. After a little bit of shopping, JCC was the obvious answer. Anyone that's had experience with the JCC community knows that they're guaranteed to find three things here. Sincerity. The faculty, staff, and professionals on campus are completely dedicated to providing the best education that they can and working with students like myself who have alternative learning patterns. Second, you can always expect JCC faculty and staff to be completely genuine. They continuously strive to provide the best college experience possible and are never afraid to be completely on the level and honest with a student. Last and most importantly for me, you can expect a healthy degree of challenge and support. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a staff or a faculty member with a question or a concern, and they've invited me into their office, sat me down, perhaps given me a biscotti, and helped me work out my problem thoroughly and realistically, while making sure to exercise and stress my mind. With these three tenets in mind, it's clear for all to see that Dr. Duckworth is a fantastic fit for JCC. As my mentor and good friend, Dr. Rabb, would say, he's been fairly swell. <laughs> A bit of Dr. Rabb wisdom, echoing the words of one of my favorite philosophers, waxes poetic when it suggests that the most intelligent thing one can do is to remain silent and to listen. Now, I was lucky enough to be one of the students, one of the student interviewers, when our president first came to visit. Immediately, I was struck by his sincerity and his frankness. While other candidates sought to impress us with their epic sweeping plans for the future of JCC, when asked what his plans were, Dr. Duckworth said that it would be presumptuous of him to have a master plan. He needed time to assimilate to the community and to get an understanding of what people's needs and wants were. Since then, I found I can always expect Dr. Duckworth to be completely honest and completely genuine. He speaks to students as equals and isn't afraid to use that very rarely heard four-letter word. Love, of course. <laughs> Additionally, he has approached JCC with an opus mi open mind, an earnest ambition, and endless enthusiasm. In the tradition of outstanding administration, 
I'm duly impressed by the work that he has accomplished and just how quickly he has made himself a member of our community. His love of family and education is inspiring to students and faculty alike. On behalf of the student body, it is my pleasure to offer formal welcome to Dr. Corey Duckworth. I know we're all looking forward to working with you to innovate, improve, and augment our community. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Now I would like to read the words written by Daryl Bray, the Student Senate President of the Cattaraugus County Campus. On behalf of the JCC student body, and particularly the students from the Cattaraugus County Campus, it is my great pleasure to welcome Dr. Corey Duckworth as the eighth, eighth President of Jamestown Community College. When I first met Dr. Duckworth, it was on paper, rather than in person. I read the resumes of all final candidates who applied for the position of president of Jamestown Community College. Of the resumes I read, it was Dr. Duckworth's that impressed me the most. Even on paper, his desire to work with and on behalf of students came shining through. I knew this was a leader I would be anxious to meet, and eventually I had that opportunity. I met Dr. Duckworth and his wife for the first time at a function sponsored by Student Senate. The following week, he was a guest at our Student Senate luncheon. After meeting him and talking with him, it has convinced me even more that the right candidate was selected for the position. All of those hopes I had imagined from meeting him on paper came to reality in meeting him in person. Dr. Duckworth, I'm looking forward to working with you and partnering with you to create an even stronger JCC. But for today, welcome to Jamestown Community College. I wish you every success. We now continue with greetings from Dr. Jerry Crinan. Professor Crinan has been a full-time faculty member of English at the North County Center since 1993. In addition to his faculty role, Dr. Crinan is also the chairperson of the faculty. Dr. Crinan received the SUNY Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Scholarship and Creative Activities in 2006. Dr. Crinan? Thank you. On behalf of the faculty, I've been asked to say a few words of welcome to President Duckworth on this momentous occasion. It's a rare honor, honor and a privilege to do so. It's the usual thing to dial in a humorous anecdote or quip at the beginning of a talk, but it's not the usual thing to become the president of a college. I can barely imagine the mountain of paperwork, the torrent of meetings, the galloping stream of names to remember and personalities to sort out. Corey himself has said that at times he feels like a man trying to drink from a fire hose. <laughs> Far from funny, it's truly a serious leap into new world of responsibilities and expectations. Mercifully, President Duckworth landed at Jamestown Community College. Its brand of caring, connecting, and challenging extends not only outward into the greater community, but inward too, or especially. You can't get to be the top performing community college in New York without working together, pulling together, and radically caring about each other. This is just an official welcome but the good will and the will to do good have been with us for months already. We know the Duckworths, we know that Corey and Elva and their children, who I understand are here today, awesome. We know that they come from Utah. Most New Yorkers probably know less than three things about Utah. <laughs> Mormons, Salt Lake City, maybe, 
and patches of flat desert or good snow skiing, I think. <laughs> Some have seen the license plate, the beehive state. And if they were like me, imagined heavy beehives hanging from crags <laughs> and underhangs of reddish or bleached stone. Thereby, it beehives me. I mean, it behooves me to look into the home state of my new boss. Here I have inserted my humorous quip. I enjoy working out crossword puzzles. If you stay at them, you recognize typical answers. One is U-T-E, Ute, quote, a Western Indian tribe. Utah is named after these people. I knew the answer, but I never knew why I should know the answer until now. <laughs> the beehive means industry, like the bees working, getting the job done. Many of President Duckworth's people were miners. He told me one of the ores they dug out of the ground was molybdenum. Molybdenum is a, is a marvelous word to any word lover. It sounds like how I imagine minerals and ores and magmas themselves sound when they speak to each other. Molybdenum. I challenge anyone from the state of New York to spell that word. <laughs> Still, no matter how you spell it, I see it as most recently being touted as a substitute for silicon in high-tech circuitry. Sounds like something a wised-up New Yorker might want to look into. <laughs> the motto of New York is excelsior, ever upward. The motto of Utah is industry. When you join the two together, you get work aligned with the uppermost of expectations. You get the possible synthesis of Utah and New York. It's an exciting metaphor to run with, one that our students must need and expect if they are to succeed. Concentration with flexibility and an overarching welcomeness that is genuine and freely stated, such as I extend to you, Corey, Elva, the Duckworths, warmly and officially. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Crinan. <laughs> It is my pleasure to ask Paula Snyder to take the podium to offer greetings on behalf of the JCC staff. Ms. Snyder has served JCC in various capacities for more than 20 years, most recently as the Director of College Health Services. In 2013, Ms. Snyder received the SUNY Chancellor's Award and President's Awards for her professional service. In addition, Ms. Snyder is an executive board member of the New York State College Health Association, representing community colleges across New York State. Thank you, Jean. Dr. Duckworth, Elva, and all your family, Vice Chancellor Duncan Portier, Board of Trustees members, honored guests, friends, colleagues, and students. Thank you for the privilege to address you today, representing the staff of our entire college across four campus sites and so many wonderful communities that we serve as New York State's number one ranked community college. It is in this celebratory spirit that I bring you and your family our most sincere congratulations. I know you have met many of us, either in your initial interviews or welcoming us all back to another new and exciting fall semester for our students. But there may be some you have not met, the quiet, understated worker bees who go about their responsibilities with commitment and determination, 
who keep the wheels turning, our computers humming, the buildings beautiful, and our students enrolled. They join me to wish you and Elva great success as you shepherd us into another chapter of excellence, as has been our JCC tradition for over 60 years. In addition to the pride we feel in our work in all areas of all our departments of student and college life, we have a wonderful sense of commitment to each other. I believe you may have seen this already. The JCC family stretches over great geographic miles, electronic miles, and years of pride in our history. And now, Corey and Elva, this includes you. Though staff do not necessarily have direct classroom teaching roles in affecting our students' education, we take our work very seriously as role models, facilitators of their growth, and personal resources in learning lifelong lessons, treating them as we would want to be treated, helping them to interact positively, assisting them to navigate and communicate through an ever increasingly stressful and sometimes isolating world. As you have more experiences with your staff, you will see that professionalism and compassion at all levels of the team you have you can now call your own. Dr. Duckworth, today we officially welcome you as the new president of JCC, and we celebrate this new chapter of your life and ours as we travel this first year together. From all of us, once again, our most sincere congratulations. We offer you and your family our help and support for even more wonderful days ahead. Thank you, Paula. We now have the wonderful privilege to listen to the talents of JCC freshman Erin Arsenault, who is, not surprisingly, enrolled in the music program. She will be accompanied today by Kathleen Gagliano.
Beautiful. Thank you, Erin. I now call to, the, call to the podium Johanna Duncan Poitier. Ms. Duncan Poitier is the Senior Vice Chancellor for Community Colleges in the Education Pipeline for the State University of New York, providing system oversight and coordination for SUNY's 30 community colleges. She also provides leadership across all 64 SUNY campuses to develop clinical teacher preparation and the educational connections between its institutions and local school districts, business leaders, community organizations, and others to maximize student success and prepare a highly qualified workforce. Prior to joining SUNY in 2009, Ms. Duncan Poitier served as the Senior Deputy Commissioner of Education for the New York State Education Department. Thank you so much, Jean. <clears throat> and I have to say, oh my God. <laughs> One more round of applause for Erin. It is so wonderful to be here at Jamestown Community College this afternoon, and such a pleasure to be here on this momentous occasion to represent the State University of New York to bring greetings and best wishes from Chancellor Zimfer, the SUNY Board of Trustees, and me. I'm also extremely excited and wish to say, uh, be among the, uh, the others who've said congratulations. One of the great pleasures of serving at the system level is to be able to usher in the, a new era of leadership on a campus. And today we celebrate Jamestown Community College and officially welcome Corey Duckworth as the new president for this wonderful campus. And what a spectacular campus this is. It is one of the finest examples of what makes SUNY great. Jamestown Community College is, in my opinion, a gateway to education, opportunity, and economic development for New York and for the more than 3,600 students you serve every day. To the faculty and staff, I say thank you very much for what you do day in and day out. You make a difference for these students. Students who, um, again, the Chronicle, I heard it mentioned earlier, the Chronicle has cited as being one of the top performing institutions in the United States. But I have to tell you, I had the pleasure of speaking with some students. And I asked them what makes Jamestown Community College great. And one just said it in a nutshell, so many opportunities, academic and otherwise. As Senior Vice Chancellor, I've had the pleasure, and I would even say the privilege, of working with Dr. Greg DeSinke. Over his tenure here at SUNY, at, uh, with SUNY, I would like to thank him for all that he's done for Jamestown Community College and the leadership he has provided among the 30 community colleges for the SUNY system. He really is a leader among leaders and has established, really, a foundation that Dr. Duckworth will, I know, build upon and, and, and have the campus grow. Thank you, Dr. DeSinke. I will tell you that I've always called him Dr. DeSinke. So now, I, is it Dr. DeSinke? Okay, so Greg. <laughs> so, for the man of honor today, as you know, in June, the SUNY Board of Trustees confirmed Dr. Duckworth as the next president of Jamestown upon the recommendation of the SUNY Chancellor, Nancy Zimfer. I was then, as I am now, struck by the incredible leadership experience that Corey brings to SUNY and to this campus. We are very fortunate to have him here at, Jam at Jamestown where he is already making his mark. I will tell you that on a personal level, he is one of the most likable leaders uh, I've had the pleasure of working with. He really has a personal side of, of leadership as well as his concern for students. It was said a few times during the day 
but this is indeed a family. Once you are a president of the State University of New York, you are always a president of the State University of New York, and you are a part of a, a family of 63 campuses in addition to this being the 64th. Elva, your wife, your beautiful wife, and you are joining what we consider a family. But I have to say, having met your family, you're in really good shape. <laughs> um, coming a very long way, you have so many friends uh, and colleagues who've traveled so far to be here with you today, as well as your brother, your daughters, your sons, your grandson, as well as your mom, who is just delightful, who shared that she has 25 grandchildren, and she wanted to make sure I stipulated 41 great-grandchildren. Is this woman awesome or what? She said she's responsible for it all. <laughs> so I leave you um, with a, a big heart a real, real sense of excitement about the work that's being done here at Jamestown Community College, the scholarship, and really the wonderful difference our colleagues are making for students day in and day out. The work being done in every facet of academic program throughout the system truly reflects the power of SUNY. And I want to welcome you, Dr. Duckworth, as the newest member of this incredible university right here in Jamestown. Sincerest congratulations. Thank you. Dr. William Setterberg, recently retired, is the Utah Commissioner of Higher Education and serves as a Regents Professor at the University of Utah. Prior to his appointment as commissioner, Dr. Setterberg served as president at both Utah Valley University and Ferris State University in Michigan. He was the architect in achieving university status for Utah Valley University. In addition, earlier in his career, Dr. Setterberg served as a, as a Michigan State legislator for 12 years. Upon leaving the commissioner's office, Dr. Setterberg was designated an American Association of State Colleges and Universities Senior Scholar. In this role, he chairs a task force of 20 presidents and chancellors in determining how to evaluate the priority of higher education within the realm of state policy. He is also the author of a computer simulation currently in use at Harvard and AASCU that details the challenges of being a college president. Dr. Setterberg initially hired President Duckworth as a vice president for university advancement and marketing at Ferris State University. Together, they were, raising, they were successful in raising significant financial resources to support campus building and scholarship projects. He later invited Dr. Duckworth to become the Vice President for Student Affairs at Utah Valley University, where they worked together for an additional five years. While serving as Commissioner of the Utah System of Higher Education, Dr. Setterberg appointed President Duckworth to serve as the principal negotiator in achieving a successful merger between Utah State University and the College of Eastern Utah. Dr. Setterberg and his wife Joyce reside in Biltmore Lake, North Carolina, and have become active in the community. Dr. Setterberg, please take the podium, and as you do so, please accept our thank you for joining us today as we celebrate this new chapter in the history of JCC. Gee, I enjoyed that introduction. I don't know if anybody else did, but thank you so very, very much. Uh, it is indeed a great honor to uh, join this community, and it truly is a community. You just kind of feel that. You kind of sense it. And so it's just wonderful to be here and join this community and to share a few comments uh, today. Uh, I'm really just kind of blown away. You have legislators here. You have city commissioners here. You have your trustees here. You have... Uh, uh, civic leaders of various organizations. 
Uh, you have the former president, two former presidents, which I know uh, uh, it's a bittersweet experience to go through to see the passing of the baton, although in this case it might be the mace uh, that's being uh, uh, passed on. Uh, but uh, you have built a phenomenal institution, and inauguration events are really an opportunity to recognize and to celebrate the passing of the baton, if you will, to a new generation of leaders. And so, uh, President uh, DeSincu, uh, it's great to have you here. And i just tell you a little side story about this. When we were walking down the aisle, I noticed everybody in front of me was touching your shoulder. Uh, and I wondered what this was all about. I thought I had a vision of these football games, you know, where the teams run out and they, they touch something. So. Uh, I think that was for good luck as we, uh, uh, we went through that. Uh, I have a particular delight in being here, uh, obviously to join the celebration of Corey Duckworth's inauguration. Corey and I go back over 15 years now. A uh, little story about uh, how we met. Uh, as If you know me at all, you may know that I like junk food, and that's not a very positive thing to say about yourself, but it's a weakness. So I'm enjoying a wonderful meal at Burger King in a small town of Cedar City, uh, Michigan. And uh, we're hunting for a new VP for advancement and marketing. And all of a sudden this guy comes up to me and introduces himself to me. And it's Corey Duckworth who had recognized me. And we kind of did our first interview right there at Burger King. And uh, <laughs> uh, he professed to like French fries, although I tell you later he's never eaten very many French fries. So I think that was all part of the uh, interviewing uh, process. <laughs> But Corey and I hit it off right away, appointed him uh, Director of Advancement and Marketing. Uh, those of you with some money in the audience, uh, watch out. Uh, he is not afraid to ask you for money. So uh, think about what you're going to contribute here to JCC, because uh, you need to really help make this institution successful. Uh, I then left uh, Ferris State University and went to Utah. And we needed a vice president of student affairs. And I got this call from Corey, and he says, Bill, I see his ad for a vice president of student affairs. You know, I don't have that background specifically, but you think you might be interested. Well, I knew he was Mormon. I knew he was from Utah. I like the guy. And anybody can be vice president of student affairs, isn't that right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can see why I'm retired. You know, you just have to move along. But we hired Corey, and uh, he was phenomenal. And he's been joined by four of his colleagues from Utah Valley University that are here in the audience to welcome him and to congratulate him. And I th that's a statement of how people appreciated him at Utah Valley. And I just uh, grew to, to love and admire him in that role as well. Now, all that is great. But what really intrigued me about this invitation uh, to come to Jamestown, New York, uh, was the fact that I had gotten into doing a little genealogy. And it turns out that my relatives are from this part of the world. In fact, we had a Della, the family is from Sweden. We had five brothers and one sister and their mother uh, that moved to Youngsville uh, and Sugar Grove area. And many of them have migrated to Falconer, and some have even gotten into the city of Jamestown. Uh, <laughs> And I haven't been able to get into this into a lot of depth, but if any of you have in your family tree a Charles and Clara Cedarberg, uh, or if you are descendants of Adam and Joanna Olson from Youngsville, or if you happen to be related to Augusta Anderson, who married an Alex Cedarberg, who later became sheriff, talk to me after the program. <laughs> so I'm, I had to do this, Corey. I had the microphone. You know, how many chances do you do? So I've spent the last day and a half or so uh, rounding up old relatives and uh, uh, had a nice breakfast this morning with a couple of Cedarbergs that I had never met. So it's a real treat uh, to be in this part of the world and to celebrate that genealogy. Now, I'll tell you a little genealogy story that will set up some observations about Corey. Uh, when I was in Red Oak, Iowa, which is the home base of most of my family, uh, I was talking to a group of older guys at the Burger King, get a theme uh, running through this, and this guy said, what brings you here? And he called me Sonny, which I loved, you know. And I said, I'm doing genealogy. And he said, well, I was a postman here in Red Oak for a long time. Uh, to, who are you looking for? What do you want to know about? And I said, Gertie Cedarberg. And he said, oh, I know Gertie Cedarberg. Uh, she's dead now. But, and I said, well, what do you know about Gertie? And she, he said, well, she was not very good looking, and she was kind of mean. <laughs> Now, that's the kind of genealogy you really want to find out. <laughs> so I 
check this with my uncle, who is 90 years old and one of the most mild-mannered guys you would ever want to meet. I mean, you know, he's just a really nice guy. And I said, what do you know about Gertie? And he says, well, you know, she really wasn't much to look at. And I don't think she was very nice. So uh, if any of you know Gertrude Cedarberg, uh, Pat, don't pass that story on. But it, it brought back to me the fundamental point that at the end of the day, out of genealogy, you're known for a handful of things. Okay, and those handful of things are really about some critical core issues about who you are. Uh, and there's three core issues that stand out to me about your new president, Corey Duckworth, after we worked all these years. Uh, one is an incredible sense of what he does comes from a core set of values and beliefs that almost everything that Corey approaches and does can be evaluated and traced back to those beliefs and values that he holds. Honesty, integrity, hard work, positive values that he brings into the position. So if you're in the audience and you think you're going to bribe Corey to get your son admitted to the JCC, School of Nursing or whatever it happens to be, forget it. He's not going to go for that. He's a man of values. Second thing that he's known for, in my opinion, is being a very open person. And you've heard that from the students. Look over here, I guess, our student uh, representatives from the faculty. He will listen. He will sit down. He is a phenomenal person of wanting to know the circumstance, the players, how to bring people together. He is a conciliator. He's a collaborator. He wants to build a team of people that will move this institution forward. Uh, he is also doing that in a sense of politeness and genuineness that is very delightful. Uh, for example, as president, he never approached me and said, Cedarberg, that is a screwy bad idea that you had. He doesn't say that. He will say, and administrators in the audience be ready for this, you may want to take another look at that issue. All righty. <laughs> I ran into that many, many times uh, in, in my career. And finally, he is, as a characteristic, is that he is strategic. Corey, you know, some presidents approach presidencies like the game of whack-a-mole, you know, where an issue emerges and you whack it down, and then it emerges over here. Those county commissioners do something, and you whack it down here. Faculty do something, and you whack it down here. Students go out and get drunk some night, and something happens, and they, you whack it down here. Uh, this is not a game of whack-a-mole. What Corey does is think strategically about how to move an institution or a program ahead. So you will come to enjoy this strategic thinking of Corey Duckworth over the years. He is a believer, as I have observed him, in what Max Dupree talks about, the art of leadership. Assessing the situation, establishing a plan, implementing the plan with modifications for circumstances, and building the legacy that you want to be known for. So you have already started to experience the first stage of that. He is listening. He is talking. He is getting feedback from a variety of sources, assessing the situation. He will soon at some point move into the planning stage, and it will be a collaborative planning stage, and uh, the institution will move ahead. So those are, instead of being ugly and nasty, a few of the characteristics about my friend Corey Duckworth. Now, there are some things he's not. He's not a golfer. Okay, If you think you're going to have great golf outings and have the president play, don't think about it. Uh, it is a very ugly thing. Uh, I did. I was telling my sister, uh, who's from St. Louis, that uh, she knows Corey, and I asked her about it. I said, I'm going up there to Jamestown, where our people are from, and uh, to inaugurate uh, Corey Duckworth. And, and she said, oh, yeah, I know Corey. She told me all about the history of the golf ball. And that's as about much depth that Corey got into on the golf course. So he's not a, he's not a golfer. He's also not a stand-up comedian. Uh, you will not hear him talk about the three Jamestown residents that go into the bar and, and whatever. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he wouldn't know about that anyway, so it, uh, but he's not a stand-up comedian, and he's also not a Lutheran. Now, this is very distressing to me, uh, and here in Jamestown, uh, you're going to have to start listening to Prairie Home Companion and get, get plugged in. So my time has gone on. I'm going to make five quick predictions, and we'll come back in, in 19 years, uh, former president, and uh, we'll see how these predictions hold up. First prediction, quickly, is in Corey's tenure, there will be no speeding tickets given to Corey. Uh, 
Corey is the slowest driver in America. <laughs> if you're ever going to go with Corey somewhere, drive. Uh, I, you, you need to know this. This is important stuff. Um, I do want to have one little caveat in my prediction. I was driving by a school yesterday here in this county, and the speed limit when school is like out of school session at half hour or something like that in a school zone, it's 15 miles per hour. Uh, nobody goes 15 miles an hour except maybe Corey. So uh, <laughs> that's my only qualification there. Uh, the second prediction is that Corey will become known as a student-focused president. Uh, he thinks students. He uh, breathes student affairs. He loves athletics. Uh, he will attend every student event. Uh, he even appreciates singing and opera and, and the qualities that students bring into the institution. He believes in engaged learning. He believes in academic quality. When 19 years goes by and we come back and uh, ex experience uh, the next president's inauguration, we will refer to him as a student-oriented uh, president. He will also be known for being a focus on leadership. He's created on my two campuses a leadership program for mid-level university employees to have them develop leadership skills on the campus. And I predict that that's something in your future here uh, at JCC. And we'll be happy to bring that simulation that was referred to, so I throw that in. Um, fourth observation is for a policy wonks in the audience and your commissioners and legislators. Corey is committed to comprehensive services of a community colleges for the community. Uh, I was impressed that you clearly articulate the three missions of this institution. Uh, the uh, liberal arts uh, and the career oriented focus and then the continuing education focus. He will expand that and he will bring to this campus a more comprehensive set of academic programs and training programs and educational opportunities than this school has had before. Because he is committed to this institution being engaged in the community, being a servant of the community, uh, being a steward of the educational aspects of this community. So prediction number four is that you will see a comprehensive set of programs we know that this community cannot survive if you don't have 60% of your public have at least a two-year degree or certificate. This is task number one for campuses like Jamestown, is to increase the penetration of training programs and two-year and four-year degrees here in this community. And the final prediction is that he will be quietly effective beyond your expectations. In my office at home, I have this composite drawing that his staff did when I left Ferris State. And the composite drawing is of all the things he finagled out of my office and budget items and stuff like that, and how he had maneuvered me as president to support his agenda. And he had the audacity upon my leaving to give me this beautifully framed thing. And it hangs in my office. And I think the same thing will be true in a few years that when we look back, Corey will prove to be very effective in dealing with the regents, very effective in dealing with the legislature, very effective with dealing with foundations and the community at large. So those are five very quick predictions. Of the five, the speeding tickets probably has the greatest chance of being absolutely true. <laughs> Finally, and I know it's time before the hook comes on to get off the stage. Corey, I can't stop but to say this to the audience, and no offense to you, but a president is only a president, is only one person. A community college was built on the shoulders of people who cared about this community, who cared about their young people and not so young people. People here in this room have made Jackson, Jackson, what am I saying, Jamestown Community College. Corey cannot be successful unless this community is behind him. If this community rallies the support of this campus and his program and his plan and you team up and you work together as engaged individuals working to advance education here in the Jamestown area and maybe even Sugar Grove, <laughs> great things can happen. And I know that as we look forward in the future, Corey, this is going to be a phenomenally successful tenure. You're the right man for the right job. And again, I'm delighted you're in the home of the Lutherans and not all those crazy Mormons out there in Utah. <laughs>
Thank you, Dr. Setterberg. It is now my honor to invite to the podium Wally Hucknow chairperson of the Jamestown Community College Board of Trustees to offer his remarks and to conduct the ceremony of installation. Mr. Hucknow, perhaps better known to many in Western New York as Coach Hucknow, is a retired Jamestown High School teacher. He served the youth of Jamestown as an English teacher, football coach, and athletic director for nearly 43 years. Mr. Hucknow is also a former Chautauqua County legislator and became a JCC trustee in 2006. He was elected chairperson of JCC's Board of Trustees earlier this fall. On a personal note, Mr. Hucknow has been married to his wife, Dixie, for 51 years, and the couple have four children and are the proud grandparents of eight, eight grandchildren. Wally? Boy, these are tough acts to follow. Uh, uh, that I know. Welcome to everyone on this wonderful, festive, glorious occasion. The weather will get no better if you're not from Western New York. This is the best it's going to be for the next six months. This is it. But we, even the weatherman, cooperated on this special day. Today I'm representing the Board of Trustees, and not only all of the college community, but all of Western New York and the entire area we represent. <coughs> Almost one year ago, we began this search. Little did I know when our current chair, Lance Spicer, said to me and another gentleman, why don't you co-chair finding the new president? Little did I know that in the midway, Lance would be stepping down and I would be sliding in. Finding a new president, where do you start? We had the perfect template, Dr. Greg DeSincu. Obviously, we wanted someone just like that or similar to that. We know, knew at the beginning, the first order of business was to contact Chancellor Zimfer's office and asked for guidance. And we then began the search. We sent letters out to over 1,200 colleges, a number of professional journals. We selected a committee that would be representative of our area. I believe we had 18 people on the committee. And we met and we discussed and we tried to reach a consensus as to what kind of person we ultimately would select. The resumes rolled in and we began to search and read and look and pull our hair out. There were so many talented people. There were people that seemed to be overqualified and underqualified. We had them from India. We had people who didn't speak English, people who weren't citizens. Almost everybody who looked at the JCC community thought what a terrific place to be. We decided we wanted a scholar, not an egghead scholar, not a nerd, but we wanted a scholar. We wanted someone good with finances, not a penny pincher, but we didn't want to give the house away either. We wanted a personality that would embrace everyone because that's what JCC is about. We wanted someone with a sense of humor, someone who could laugh at himself and he will have to, <laughs> a person with the ability to be an innovator. We don't want to reinvent the wheel, but we don't want to have business as usual. We wanted an innovator. 
and most important, someone, when we found that person, would understand what JCC is all about. That that person would appreciate and be proud of our status as the number one community college in New York State. Eventually, we found the perfect match for our school. And then we held our collective breaths to think somebody might snap him up and hire him before we had that opportunity. And that was a real concern of ours. Today, the Board of Trustees pledges its commitment to support Dr. Duckworth as our eighth president and help him continue the growth of JCC. He will receive a symbol of his new authority, the presidential medallion, which he will wear at our commencements and other important ceremonial occasions. The design is a reproduction of the college seal. I will now ask Dr. Duckworth to step forward so that I may present him with this symbol of his authority and responsibility. Dr. Duckworth, you have been duly selected to serve as president of Jamestown Community College as part of the State University of New York. By accepting the president's medallion, you accept the charge to serve with diligence, dedication, energy, vision, and integrity as you carry out the duties of the office of this great institution. We are confident that under your leadership, this institution pursuing the highest traditions of scholarship and service will continue its dedication to the region, state, nation, and world. Therefore, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Regional Board of Trustees, I hereby install you as the eighth president of Jamestown Community College. I now present to you the faculty, students, and friends of Jamestown Community College, President Corey L. Duckworth. Needless to say, that's, uh, that's definitely a little humbling uh, to recognize that all of these activities uh, revolve to some extent around me. And uh, my, my job for the next little bit is to convince you that it's really all about you, because that's really how I feel. <clears throat> I appreciate so much those that have taken the time out of their schedules to be here today, and those that have spoken on the program. I am deeply appreciative of the students that have participated here. Uh, as Dr. Cedarberg mentioned, uh, the students have a place deep in my heart, uh, maybe because I was one for so long and uh, never quite got that out of my system, but appreciate very much uh, uh, the comments that have been offered. And uh, Dr. Crennan, I, uh, you didn't discover yet that that molybdenum is just uh, the world's, uh, it's, it's like kryptonite, you know? <laughs> and so I, I once worked in those molly bins uh, at the mine there in Utah, and uh, when that stuff gets, in, gets on you, it renders you totally powerless. So <laughs> please keep that away from I me. I want some, <laughs> <laughs> um, And uh, Paula, thank you so much for welcoming me. Uh, having been a member of the staff of several institutions, I recognize and appreciate so much what the, the staff does to uh, not only to make the institution run well, but to uh, 
touch the lives of students in ways that allow them to be successful and to carry on in their life's endeavors. Now, one of the reasons that, uh, um, well, before I go there, let me, ex uh, I'm going to express appreciation just a minute uh, about some of this, so maybe I'll wait till then. Um, you know, one of the reasons I invited uh, Dr. Cedarberg to come and speak is I want to hear that Aunt Gertie story one more time. <laughs> it, it's, it just touches your heart every time you hear it. And uh, kind of, I'm sure that she looked a lot like Bill. And um, <laughs> and um, so I, I knew if he if I invited him he would say it again, um, and uh, and so I'm glad that he found the opportunity to do that. Um, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Winston Churchill once alleged, uh, he allegedly said, of course, I don't know if you heard on PB, uh, PBS, uh, that nobody's really sure what Winston said because everybody attributes everything to him, but uh, Winston Churchill was alleged to have said that courage is what it takes to stand up and speak, and courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. I think uh, my courage is being tested on both sides of the equation today, but right now I think I'd prefer the, the latter expression to the former. Um, Nevertheless, I'm deeply gratified by the warm and welcoming reception that Elva and I have received in accepting the honor and responsibility of becoming the eighth president of Jamestown Community College. For me, and hopefully for all of us, today's inaugural events are convened in recognition of all that is significant about Jamestown Community College. These ceremonial proceedings are intended as a celebration of the progress and contributions, past, present, and future, of this great institution of higher learning. Before proceeding, allow me to take a few moments to honor and recognize those who, so those who have so graciously taken the time out of their busy schedules to join us in this celebration. I would specifically like to acknowledge Board Chair Wally Hucknow and all the members of the JCC Board of Trustees that are here today. Thank you for the trust and the confidence that you've expressed in me by extending this appointment. I also appreciate the attendance of Johanna Duncan Poitier, who was introduced earlier. As the, uh, as the SUNY Senior Vice Chancellor for Community Colleges, Johanna is a strong advocate for our cause at the state system level. I have appreciated already her friendship and enthusiasm over the last several months. I'm, I'm likewise grateful for the government and civic leaders, as well as college and university presidents and their delegates who have been introduced to you and are, who are here to share this memorable experience with us today. I'm deeply grateful for the large number of faculty that are here and students uh, who have so graciously welcomed us into the JCC fold and for their willingness uh, to give up, I was going to say, a beautiful autumn Friday. And uh, it was beautiful at one point and then got a little nasty as we came in. So your <laughs> prediction was correct. But uh, to be willing to give that up and to sit through yet another meeting on campus, I think, is worthy of recognition. I'd like to extend a special recognition to the members uh, of my family and several friends who have traveled here from Utah and Michigan. I would like to ask my family in particular if they would please just stand up for a minute. I think you're here. My mother and all five of my children, one of my, my one grandson and uh, my sister-in-law were all able to be here today, and that means a lot to me. Um, if, I, if I stand for anything, and if anything is important to me in life, it's family. And I have been blessed to be a part of a great one, and uh, I never forget that. There are... Uh, nine other grandchildren that are not here, three in-law spouses, and many others who uh, may be viewing uh, these proceedings <coughs> by internet transmission. I'm overwhelmed by the love and constant, su constant support that they consistently share with me. Thank you so much. I would also like to recognize those who have so thoughtfully planned and produced today's inaugural events, in particular the inaugural committee, under the capable direction of Dr. Eileen Goodling, with committee members Marsha Hearn, 
Cindy Pasquatori, Ann Nelson, Kim Ireland, Bridget Johnson, <clears throat> and Elva Duckworth. I also express my appreciation to all of the others at the college who have offered their time and talents to make today's event so meaningful to us. I'm particularly grateful that my good friend, mentor, and exemplar, Dr. William A. Cedarberg, could join us today. A true friend and mentor has, has the ability to see the buried seeds of potential within us and the willingness to take a chance in nourishing those seeds without the benefit of knowing to what end they might eventually blossom. On three distinct occasions, Dr. Cedarberg thoughtfully cultivated the soil of my career pro progression. In the first instance, he hired me as a, he offered me an appointment as Vice President of Advancement and Marketing at Ferris State University. He then took perhaps a larger risk in allowing me to switch career tracks when he offered me the position of Vice President of Student Affairs at Utah Valley University. I specifically remember the conversation that we had at that time. He said, well, what are you going to do with all those people that come in that have been drinking and have had violations with the law? Because you, you haven't lived in that environment. And I said, well, Bill, I'm from Utah, and I know what those individuals are like, and it's not going to be quite the same as it was here in Michigan. So I think over time he was able to see that uh, my, pro my position was correct in that. Um, in the eight and a half years we worked together, we were able to find important resources for the institutions we served, build buildings and programs, and further extend education and leadership opportunities to thousands of students. In our last project together, Dr. Cedarberg, then serving as the Utah Commissioner of Higher Education, invited me to work as the chief negotiator in merging Utah State University and the College of Eastern Utah, a task where others had tried two times before and, and had failed. The primary goal was to provide security for and hope to a financially strapped community college located in eastern Utah. This time we were able to succeed, but more importantly for me, this is the event which brought to full bloom in my heart the conviction of the tremendous value and importance of protecting and extending the mission of our nation's community colleges. In addition to these contributions, Bill has taught me several important lessons about leadership and life. The first one of these he already mentioned. It is actually perfectly acceptable to conduct an impromptu interview with a vice presidential candidate in a Burger King over a Whopper in an obscure little town in Michigan. <laughs> it actually worked out quite nice for me. Um, uh, these are exactly the circumstances where we first met. His relaxed yet effective style of leadership has always been a great reminder to me that we should remember to have fun and enjoy <clears throat> the people we work with along the way. I appreciate many other words of advice and counsel that I've received from him, such as, don't take yourself too seriously. Can you imagine him saying that? <laughs> <laughs> Never let yourself believe or act like you're in your last job. Be grateful if you can get most of the people moving in the same direction towards your desired and worthwhile objectives. And sometimes you have to fashion an acceptable compromise to achieve the greatest possible benefit for those you are pledged to serve. I will forever remain grateful for these Cedarburg sonnets and for Bill's friendship, leadership, and zest for life. And another reason why I invited him to come was because I always told him I would eventually get the last word. And I think this is probably it. Not a funeral. Just keep remembering Ann Gertie. <laughs> um, anyway, I definitely appreciate and will be, be grateful for his friendship over the years. These reflections bring to mind a host of other mentors who have made this day possible for me. To a very large extent, my life is but a reflection of their influence. I was blessed from, begin from the beginning with parents who reminded me to be a leader and to stand for something important. Early on, I am sure that I gave them plenty of reasons to think otherwise. My mother encouraged me to write and to never stop writing because she thought I was good at it. My father was an example of supreme confidence but compassionate understanding. <clears throat> his example continues to propel me forward despite his untimely passing more than 15 years ago. My older brother has been an unerring friend, an example of stability <clears throat> and goodness worthy of emulation. My wife, Elva, whom who many of you are coming to know, is an extraordinary example of sacrificial service in my life. Aside from being my closest friend and confidant for more than 40 years, 
She, more than anyone else, has taught me the importance of foregoing personal comforts to assist in blessing the lives of others. She encourages me on a daily basis to be a good person and to do all that I can <clears throat> to help others believe in their own intrinsic value and the contributions they can make to the uplifting things of life. I would be remiss not to mention some of the extraordinary professional educators who have inspired me. Dan Jones, the dynamic political science professor that ignited the passion of my own learning so many years ago. J.D. Williams, my graduate school advisor, who taught me how to care deeply about the students I would serve. J.D. actually remembered my name when I ran into him more than 30 years after graduation. I have been blessed with many, many exceptional colleagues that have supported me and taught me how to move forward in difficult and challenging circumstances. <clears throat> Several of them are here today. I am grateful they so consistently believed in me, even at times when I was not sure about myself. I have also had the opportunity to work closely with several other college and university presidents. In them, I have had great examples of hard work, leadership, intellectual engagement, and compassion. My deep and abiding gratitude for each of these individuals defies full expression through any simple words I might offer here today. Albert Schweitzer once advised that at times our own light goes out and is rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lighted the flame within us. Those I have mentioned and many more share a portion of the warmth I am experiencing today. Allow me to return now to the celebration of great values that under, undergird Jamestown Community College. Everyone in attendance today deserves to know that the clear message I have received over the last 10 weeks in assuming the role of president is that Jamestown Community College is a beloved and treasured asset in the lives and communities it is pledged to serve. Hundreds of individuals in Cattaraugus and Chautauqua County and beyond have gone out of their way to express their feelings to me about the power and the and promise of this exceptional college. Each testimonial stands as a firm realization of the dreams and aspirations of the visionaries and talented professionals who have, to this point, pioneered the pathways of institutional success. Today we are fortunate and intend, we, today we are the fortunate and intended beneficiaries of their incredible foresight, wisdom, and sacrifice. More importantly, however, their lives should serve as a clarion call, encouraging each of us to deploy a full measure of our own talent, energy, and intellect in furthering this important work for the benefit of a new generation of learners. I feel certain that James Prendergast, namesake of the Jamestown Community and Jamestown Community College, would be very proud of the outcomes that his pioneering exper experiment continues to manifest today. According to Crocker and Curie, Prendergast advocated schooling for all the children of Jamestown and for many years bore the entire cost of that education, providing facilities, teachers, and supplies. Prendergast's example of personal sacrifice for the cause of education has been passed down through the decades and remains an important and valued characteristic of the Jamestown community. JCC has long been the beneficiary of willing workers and a strong philanthropic environment. In 1895, Jamestown Mayor Eliezer Green noted the importance of education to the community pioneers when he stated that, almost without exception, they were well-educated, of high character, and of excellent reputations in the communities from whence they came. They were strong and vigorous physically and intellectually. They were industrious, persevering, and determined. They came with a fixed purpose, to transform the wilderness into a community of comfortable homes for themselves and their posterity. I have witnessed many of these same characteristics in the current students, faculty, and staff of the college as they have circulated throughout its several environments. The college is a strong contributor to its societal and economic environments because those associated with it are industrious, persevering, determined, and intellectually vigorous. They have a similar fixed purpose to maintain and expand the comfort and quality of life for all around. Each individual seems to understand the importance of his or her personal effort and contribution to the benefit of the whole. Today we owe a profound debt of gratitude to those who have so capably led this institution since its inaugural year in 1950. I am grateful for Presidents Ring, Bowman, Basler, Seeger, Benke, Davies, and DeSincu. 
These individuals have guided Jamestown Community College with skill and mastery through a wide and exhilarating range of challenges and opportunities. I have enjoyed hearing some of the stories emanating from these administrations, though I'm not sure whether they comfort me or add to the consternation that any leader feels upon taking the reins of such a dynamic enterprise. I'm particularly grateful for the efforts of Dr. Greg DeSincu and his executive team who so capably guided the college through the last 19 years. We have all benefited from their skillful leadership in securing the stability and opportunities that the college enjoys today. Leadership in higher education is increasingly vital in that the value and importance of acquiring a college education is constantly under scrutiny and being questioned by some today. Articles in, the nas in national publications, discussions in state legislatures, and online chats chip away constantly at the confidence we have in our institutions of higher learning. In response, the Chronicle of Higher Education recently published the answers of several scholars to questions to the question, what is college for? Some of their thoughtful reply, replies warrant our careful attention and remind us of the essential nature of our own cause here at Jamestown Community College. Carolyn Martin, president of Amherst College, penned, college is for the development of, in, development of intelligence in its multiple forms. College is the opportunity for achievement measured against high standards. College is preparation for the complexities of a world that needs rigorous analysis of its problems and synthetic approaches to solving them. College is for learning how to think clearly, write beautifully, and put quantitative skills to use in the work of discovery. College is for the cultivation of enjoyment in forms that go beyond entertainment or distraction, stimulating our capacity to create joy for ourselves and others. College is for leave-taking of home and, and of limiting assumptions, for becoming self-directed while socially responsible. College is for finding a calling, or many callings, including the calls of friendship and love. It is for the hard work of experimentation, failure, reflection, and growth. It is about the gains we make and the losses that come with them. In an age of sound bites and indignation, college is for those who are brave enough to put at risk what they think they know <clears throat> in recognition of the responsibility we have to one another and to those still to come. Phyllis M. Wise, Chancellor of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, posed the question, should we be preparing students for the workforce or should we be preparing them for lifelong learning? Her answer is yes. It is important to teach students a body of knowledge, the facts of a discipline. One cannot pursue any profession without understanding the principles of it. Good institutions find a balance where students are free to form their long view of the world while at the same time acquiring the knowledge and skills to pursue a rewarding profession. We fail when we force students to choose a college experience where they must pick one or the other. We prepare students for the jobs and careers that will emerge and grow and change in the next 20 years, perhaps in industries not yet conceived. Those aren't job skills, these are life lessons. And finally, Brenda Hellyer, Chancellor of San Jacinto College, defends the value of community colleges by stating that, in the fall of 2011, approximately 13 million such students attended 1,132 community colleges around the country. Almost two-thirds of those students were in programs to earn an associate's degree and perhaps then transfer to a four-year university. The rest were enrolled in courses that could lead to certificates or technical careers. What is college for? It is about personal and intellectual growth, about finding new dimensions of understanding, and about gaining knowledge. It is about learning and exploring. Community colleges are uniquely positioned to be places where students can explore intellectual pursuits as well as practical career options. That's an important combination. College is for intellectual and personal development, but it must also lead to jobs for students who are working hard to make an investment in their future lives. These responses underscore the critical value proposition of Jamestown Community College. I am convinced that, that the college and its mission have never been more important than they are today. JCC is uniquely positioned to assist and inspire students in acquiring the knowledge, skills, and abilities that are essential to their personal and professional success. The community college experience we provide here is among the richest and most satisfying opportunities available to an economically, ethnically, and socially diverse student body. 
In the short time I have been here, I have discerned that academic excellence at JCC is built on a foundation of exceptional teaching and engenders critical thinking and engaged learning experiences. This continues to be the anticipated outcome of all teaching activity. I have also found that Jamestown Community College is an extraordinary laboratory for personal development and social engagement. The college is playing a pitiful, a pivotal role in organizing activities that encourage growth of the whole person. I am impressed with the comprehensive and carefully designed set of student services that are available to help students overcome deficiencies and promote individual and collective strengths within the student body. I am confident that the relationships and successful patterns of behavior developed while attending JCC will enhance the whole of our students' subsequent life experiences. The college continues to play an extremely valuable role in strengthening the cultural and economic wellsprings of the communities we serve. The accessible and affordable education we provide appears to be elevating the creative thinking and value systems of the population generally. The college's highly responsive academic, career and technical education and job training programs have been and will continue to be attractive incentives for current and potential employers. Cultural programs are enriching the community and providing a heightened sense of connectedness and holistic goodness for the benefit of all. These noteworthy characteristics are the result of hard work and careful leadership exerted by many that are here today and others that have gone before. They form the solid and substantial foundation we need to engage, we need to engage a whole host of societal challenges and opportunities that are currently at our door. For example, Personal and family value systems that bolster our social, political, economic, and educational systems need to be strengthened and supported. Preparation for college level study must be enhanced. Our enrollment opportunities must be extended to a deeper and wider range of participants. Higher levels of public and private resources are needed to achieve our critical goals and objectives. Teaching methods and delivery of student services must evolve rapidly to keep pace with the technological revolution that is sweeping every social and economic sector to which we are engaged. And we must be full partners and participants in achieving an economic revitalization of the communities in which we live. These crucial realities form the frontier against which we will test our metal and forge the enduring contribution of our particular legacy to the generations that follow. After spending 10 weeks at the helm of Jamestown Community College, I am more optimistic I am more optimistic and encouraged than ever that our pages of history will fully complement the inspirations of days gone by. Why such optimism, you ask? <clears throat> my, an my answer is this. We have within our reach all the crucial ingredients needed for success. We have some of the best students that New York or the world has to offer. The members of our faculty are experienced, professional, and willing to extend themselves to do all that is necessary to achieve successful student outcomes. The JCC staff is innovative and energetic in fashioning services that support and strengthen the learning experience for students. Our boards are filled with competent and caring individuals who are willing to sacrifice time, talent, and substance to underwrite the important work that must be done. We also have tremendous industrial, business, and education partners in the community that rely on us and who are willing to put their shoulders to the wheel to achieve our collective goals and ambitions. Furthermore, we have the support of our donors, financial sponsors, along with the backing of SUNY, the world's largest education system. In addition to our people and partners, we have the Unified Student Assistance Scholarship Program, the USC Scholarship, a pillar of college strength for decades. This fund will need to be fortified through the support of all our partners, but its impact will continue to provide the leavening agent of institutional success for many years to come. Our physical facilities are likewise exceptional, well cared for, up to the task of taking us into a very productive future. Nevertheless, these crucial ingredients may not adequately explain my optimism. Perhaps the full explanation can only be found in answer to the one set of questions I have been asked more than any other since arriving in New York. Why are you here? <laughs> Why did you come all the way across the country to work in western New York with a set of people you don't know in a land that can sometimes seem a little obscure and past its prime with a reputation for being very snowy and often quite cold? The answer is simple. I believe in what we do. I have tested the hearts and the minds of the JCC faculty and staff over the last several months. 
I have looked into the bright eyes of our aspiring students. I have mingled with leaders across our two counties who are full of hope, who have the expressed desire to move their communities forward. And I have begun to learn about the extraordinary educational opportunities that have been built here at the college. In all of this, I can sense the unmistakable and transcendent seeds of yet greater tomorrows for Jamestown Community College. This singular expression of commitment to providing a transformative educational experience for the lives of those we have the privilege to serve is a common bond I share with all of you. Hence, together, we clearly believe in the power and the promise of what we do. In conclusion, let me share with you a portion of an email I received just this week. This is a letter, uh, a communication between recent JCC graduate Brittany Vandervoort and her professor, Jackie Chris Chrisman. I offer this with their permission. It speaks volumes, I think, about the future of Jamestown Community College. Dear Dr. Chrisman, I was thinking, I want to go to my old high school and others in the surrounding area and talk about the biotechnology program at JCC. I, I feel like many students here at the high school don't realize the opportunities that are available there at JCC. I feel very privileged to have gone through your biotechnology program. I always had an interest in biology, but I really had no idea what kind of career in biology I wanted to pursue. Somehow, I serendipitously stumbled into the biotechnology program. I instantly knew that was the direction I wanted to take in life. As I progressed through the program and became more involved in research through my internship, I started realizing that there are way more opportunities out there than I had, was previously aware of. Every time we go to a conference and are actively involved in the scientific community, I'm reminded of the goals that I am working towards. Getting out there around other scientists and talking about science always reignites that inspiration that I have deep down inside me to continue working hard because there actually is an obtainable goal in mind that will allow me to have the life I want and to do what I love to do. I feel very fortunate to have found a career path that I enjoy so much and I want to share this with others. There has to be somebody else out there that was feeling the same way I was in high school. I really had no direction and was not aware of the vast number of opportunities that are out there. You just have to look for them. You have to step out of your comfort zone and try new things. Sometimes all it takes is just someone to point you in the right direction. So basically what I am trying to say here is that I want to talk to the high school students in my area about the biotechnology program at JCC. I plan on putting together a presentation during the Christmas break when I have some extra time to do so. What do you think? Signed, Peaches. <laughs> this letter is an expression of the driving motivation and deep sense of gratitude that characterize those associated with Jamestown Community College. It provides unsolicited evidence that the JCC promise of connecting, challenging, and caring has etched its influence on the hearts and self-motivated behaviors of our most important and enduring assets, the students. Such examples are to me a simple yet profound reminder that what we do really matters. Our profession and craft play an essential role in elevating the life circumstance for each individual we serve and thereby for the society in which we live. Hence, our work provides a critical and indispensable link to securing a real hope for a better and brighter tomorrow. So today, I pledge myself to all of the tasks, opportunities, and challenges associated with leading this great institution forward. I hereby commit to all within the sound of my voice and beyond that I will work hard, listen intently, collaborate abundantly, and lead with that level of vigorous energy that has come to characterize the whole of this community. To this end, I look forward to establishing a great vision and association with each of you as together we extend the power and the promise of the Jamestown Community College education to our next generation of aspiring students. I hope you will likewise enthusiastically commit to join me in pursuing and advancing such a noble and enduring JCC cause. Thank you.
Thank you, President Duckworth, and congratulations. This has truly been a wonderful celebration of Jamestown Community College as we welcome you to become a part of its story as well as a shaper of its history. Now, I believe you all understand that an event of this magnitude must have many hands involved in order for it to be successful. As we close, I would like to take a final moment to thank several of the people who have worked behind the scenes and who are not listed on the program or been previously mentioned. The lovely graphic design and website were accomplished by Jody Perrin, Birim Loche, Isaac McQuishan, and Adam Gold. Thank you to Dee Dee Hansen for box office and ticket coordination. Jim Beal and Mike Kelly coached and facilitated the music. For staging, lights, sound, and all things theater, we offer many thanks to Steve Gustafson, Scott Barton, and Sean Bryant. On that same note, for rehearsal, set, and a thousand other detail adjustments for the show Anything Goes, which opens one week from tonight in this very theater, <laughs> A double thank you to Bob Schlick. <laughs> we have some more. We are very grateful and excited to have been able to offer a live video stream of the ceremony. And for that, our kudos to Jim Parker and Joel Kiefer at Digital. Our in-house technology for the ceremony was very well managed by Denise Burby and Kyle Brown. Dave Johnson and his staff have done a tremendous job, as always, in setting up and preparing the campus for this big event. Thank you to Chris and Tina Merchant from Mariner's Pier for the wonderful luncheon for our out-of-town guests. And we will soon enjoy the benefits of Lessing's food service at our reception Thank you to Julie Wooten and her staff. And a final thank you to the many student volunteers who have served us so well today in a multitude of ways. Students are the reason for our being, and we are so proud of you. In keeping with the notion that we all, students, faculty, staff, and community members, will continue to work together, along with Dr. Duckworth, to offer our talents to shape the wonderful organization that is JCC. We will close our ceremony with the vocal talents of JCC sophomore student, Victoria McIlvain. <laughs> <laughs>